Hello everyone, this is Dr. Singaram. Welcome to the discussion of FMG questions in pediatric section, which was asked in the January 2024 exam. This was a very standard question paper in the pediatric section where expected topics were asked in the exam. There was one question which I will share it at the end, which was little surprise question, meaning that it was usual, not a usual topic, but it was asked in the exam. So we will start the discussion with the, the first question, which is from the neonatology section. Now, all of you should remember that this is based on the recalls which I have got from the students who appeared in the exam. So the actual exam question may or may not be different from what I am displaying here. But the main focus of this is to learn what topics were asked in the exam and what particular area of that topic was asked in the exam. Okay, right. So let us get started with the first question. Jaundice due to biliary atresia should be suspected when the jaundice persists beyond what age? You know that biliary atresia is one of the important causes of neonatal jaundice characterized by increased levels of conjugated bilirubin. Okay, right. Now, when you should suspect this beyond two weeks, two months or beyond two years? What should be the answer? Answer is very clearly it is beyond two weeks. Even in the usual classes we discuss like this, a jaundice which is physiological usually persists in the first two weeks. So after two weeks, it's more of a pathological condition. So this question, biliary atresia is an example of pathological jaundice. Hence, the answer has to be beyond two weeks of age. See the screenshot from Nelson textbook of pediatric, which very clearly mentioned the jaundice of extrahepatic biliary atresia should be is not evident. Can you see that it is not evident in the first week or two after birth? So it's very clearly telling you that after two weeks of birth, if jaundice is present, you can suspend extrahepatic biliary atresia. Very clear line. They have also given the reason why it should not be evident in the first two weeks. What is the reason? Can you see that? The reason is that extrahepatic bile ducts are usually present at birth but are then destroyed by an idiopathic inflammatory process. This takes around two weeks. So that is why after two weeks, the jaundice is manifesting. Very simple. Let's move on to the next question. Again, in the neonatology section only. This is a term neonate who is admitted with respiratory distress and chest x-ray reveals air bubbles in the left hemithorax. What is the likely diagnosis? This is again one more repeat question. Usually in the previous exam, they have asked this question as an x-ray question. This is a neonate with respiratory distress and the x-ray was put up. This time x-ray was not given, but instead they gave the description of that x-ray. This is how the actual x-ray will look like. Can you see very clearly what is there? There is presence of multiple air filled shadows in the left hemithorax, which is nothing but the intestinal air shadows entering into the thorax due to a defect in the diaphragm. So what is the name of this condition? Very, very clear. It is congenital diaphragmatic hernia will be the answer for this particular question. Look at the other option, respiratory distress syndrome, RDS, the third option. It is not seen in a term neonate. RDS is seen in a preterm neonate. And I'm sure that all of you should be knowing this. What will you see on the x-ray? You will see full white colored appearance called as a white out appearance of the lungs that will be seen on the x-ray. Okay, and esophageal atresia is one more previous year question. What will you see in the x-ray? There will be coiling of the nasogastric tube in the upper part of the esophagus. That is suggestive of esophageal atresia. So, all these options are out and the correct answer is option B, which is congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Very straightforward. Then, the third question is from neonatal resuscitation. Time and again, we say this in the classes. There will be one sure question from neonatal resuscitation and this time also, it has come in the exam. So what is this question about? During neonatal resuscitation, in which of the following situation, epinephrine drug should be administered? Epinephrine is adrenaline when it should be administered. Of course, we have discussed this in the classes that once the baby is not responding to chest compression and ventilation, that is positive pressure ventilation, then the last drug which you can administer is epinephrine. Now, in this question, they have asked the timeline and the heart rate also. You all know very clearly it is heart rate less than 60, you will start adrenaline okay so definitely this option is out heart rate less than 100 the last option is out because heart rate less than 100 i told you it is an indication for starting positive pressure ventilation not for adrenaline so that is very clear so whether it is uh, heart rate less than 60 with ppb for 30 seconds or heart rate less than 60 with chest compression ventilation for 30 seconds heart rate less than 60 with chest compression ventilation for 60 seconds your answer will be out of B or C only because after chest compression ventilation only you are going to start epinephrine. What is the answer? Yes, it is for 60 seconds after starting compression and ventilation. If there is no response, you have to start epinephrine. You can see this again, uh, a snapshot from Nelson textbook only. Medications are rarely required during immune resuscitation, but epinephrine should be administered when the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute 
after 60 seconds of combined ventilation and chest compression. Very, very clear wordings from the textbook itself. So the answer for this question is after 60 seconds. So here the option C will be the answer for this question. Okay, right. Now moving on to the fourth question again from the neonatology section. This is the recall. A four day old neonate has this finding from day two of life onwards. Baby appears otherwise normal. What is the likely diagnosis? Okay. See, you have to interpret this question. Uh, the day of the baby is four days and it is starting from day two. That means after the first day only, this um, finding has been noted. Okay. And if you see what is the finding, you can see this very clearly. I'll just zoom in a little bit. You can see that here that there are some red colored patches, okay, which is an elevated patch. Okay. So that means it's a papule. Along with that, you can also see there are some yellowish spots there, which is nothing but pustules. So this is basically a papulopustular lesion. Can you see that? This is basically a papulopustular lesion. So out of the given option, which option will you consider? That is a question. Is it erythema toxicum, pustular melanosis or Mongolian spot? Okay. The clue here is when it is starting. It is starting from day two. I clearly told this in the classes also. This particular lesion starts after day one. Okay. What is that lesion? Yes, it is nothing but erythema toxicum. That is the answer for this particular question. Okay, right? Erythema toxicum, which is a papillopustular lesion. In fact, this is the most common rash noted in the newborn baby itself. Okay, right? So that is the answer straightforward for this question. Look at the other option. Pustular melanosis, as the name itself says, there is melanin deposit. So it will be a hyperpigmented lesion, brownish in color along with pustule. So that is not given in the, um, I mean, picture. So it will be ruled out. Then Mongolian spots, we all know about it. It is nothing but a hyperpigmented macule seen in the back of a neonit. Okay, something like a greenish black macule. So that is again ruled out. So the clear answer for this question is erythema toxicum. Moving on to the next question, stranger anxiety occurs at what age? See, this is related to um, developmental milestone. This is something which I keep saying this in the classes. Last one or two exams, there were no questions from developmental milestone. Okay, but I told this very clearly that don't ignore that particular topic. Surely it is one of the expected topic. And this time also question has come, not one question. There were two recall questions in developmental milestone. So again, emphasizing the fact that developmental milestone is a must know topic if you appear for any exam related to pediatrics. That is very simple. Okay. So let us quickly look at this. These are all straightforward answer type questions only. Stranger anxiety occurs at what age? Four months, six months, nine months and 12 months. So what is the answer? It is very clearly six months of age is the time when stranger anxiety occurs. Okay. Right. Then one more question related to developmental milestone. Transferring objects from one hand to another hand. And unidextrous grasping is attained at what age? Four months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. Again, the answer is six months of age. Okay, both transfer object and unidextrous grasping. Remember, four months is for bidextrous grasping and not unidextrous grasping. So the answer very clearly again here is um, second option only. Okay, so that was the question number six. Okay, in the pediatric section. Moving on to the next question. A child with malnutrition, conjunctival xerosis was noted. Which of the following should be administered? This is one more question, which is again a repeat question. We keep this discussing so many times in the classes. And we always say that micronutrients are an essential part of pediatrics. Okay. And this is also uh, one question from that section only. There were a good number of questions from micronutrient section also. Okay. Clearly, the clue here is conjunctival cirrhosis, which is nothing but dryness of the conjunctiva associated with vitamin A deficiency. So this is the answer for the question. Very, very clear question only. Uh, previously, questions have been asked from the vitamin A deficiency section also, um, like keratomalacia, vitamin A deficiency, dry skin, vitamin A deficiency. Okay, And some of the students were also saying that instead of conjunctival cirrhosis, it was dryness of the skin which was given in the question along with the eye finding. There also, the answer is going to be vitamin A deficiency only. And don't forget, the dose of vitamin A is something like a very, very common question. Less than 6 months of age, how much should be the dose? It should be 50,000 international units of vitamin A should be given. 6 to 12 months, it should be 1 lakh international units of vitamin A should be given. Then after 1 year, it should be 2 lakh international units of vitamin A which should be given. Okay, right. So these are all very straightforward questions. Then one more question like a short scenario related to micronutrient deficiency only. A child presented to the OPD with limb pain as well as tiredness. Along with that, you also notice swollen, bleeding gums. 
which of the following can be given in the management so first you have to know the condition what is the condition it's a very straightforward condition what is it limb pain bleeding manifestation and that to involve in the gum is a very very clear case of scurvy okay very correct it's a clear case of scurvy which is due to vitamin c deficiency so the answer for this question is option c vitamin c should be given for this particular child and now one quick question what was the reason for limb pain in this particular child okay can you tell the answer what is the reason it's very simple there is presence of sub periosteal bleeds noted in this particular condition that is why there is a limb pain okay patients will complain of pain in the limbs and some of these children can even be not able to walk also and it can even manifest as pseudo paralysis also that is also one of the previous year question pseudo paralysis also then one more previous year question in scurvy was related to what is the basic reason why bleeding should occur in case of scurvy this is again straightforward what is that it is due to collagen defect this was asked last year collagen defect is the reason for bleeding in case of scurvy all these are usually repeatedly asked questions which you should not make any mistake let's move on to the next question number nine again related to micronutrient deficiency this time it's straightforward in which micronutrient deficiency diarrhea and following manifestation is noted what is that manifestation you can see a rash appearance in the exposed area of the neck which is what is called castle's necklace even some of the students were saying that the word castle's necklace was mentioned in the question it is nothing but rash involving the sun exposed area very very simple okay so which condition is this it is due to niacin deficiency what is the name of the condition it's nothing but pellagra pellagra you all know the three d's of pellagra which is diarrhea given in the question second is dermatitis manifesting as sun exposed areas dermatitis which is again given in the question and third d is for the dementia okay and if it is not treated this condition is not treated it will lead on to the fourth d what is the fourth d yes it is nothing but death it can also lead on to so that's about question number nine which is yet another section from micronutrient deficiency disorder okay then there were <coughs> few questions from the genetic section and uh, the systemic pediatric section which is what i'm going to put up now question number 10 the following condition occurs due to failure of closure of neuropore at what time of gestation this is a picture based question which has been asked previously also last time they put up this last time when this question was asked they put up the picture and they asked what is the embryological defect resulting in this particular condition this time they asked what time of gestation this condition is going to manifest with first of all what is this condition of course there is absence of skull there is absence of brain tissue what is that it is nothing but anencephaly which is one of the important examples of neural tube defect we all know that it is due to failure of closure of the neuropore only that too what type of neuropore is it an anterior neuropore or posterior neuropore remember anencephaly is related to the brain it's a cranial neural tube defect so it should be anterior neuropore closure when it fails to occur this condition will present now what time of gestation very very simple it is by four weeks of gestation only it is happening so that underlines the importance that if you want to give folic acid to prevent this condition from occurring it should be started before this time of gestation itself so that is why we provide periconceptional folic acid supplementation to prevent the occurrence of neural tube defects okay right anyway answer for this question is option b which is four weeks okay right now there were actually two questions related to this topic the first question was something like this 15 year old female presents for the evaluation of delayed puberty okay that is what it is 15 year old female or something like a teenager presenting with delayed puberty she also appears to be short short stature is there along with that there is widely spaced nipple i don't think anyone could have gone wrong with this it's a very basic question in genetic section what is that nothing but the turner syndrome so this was very straightforward what should be the karyotyping finding simple what is the answer it is nothing but monosomy x or 45 xo where there is one missing x chromosome which is the most common um, trisomy a um, monosomy occurring in females okay right so this is nothing but the turner syndrome there are actually two questions related to turner syndrome one was this uh, clinical type question second was something like this you are evaluating a case with suspected turner syndrome which of the following features will be seen in this particular condition that was the question here they are telling you that it is turner syndrome up front itself and they are asking you what clinical feature you will expect 
first option is it decreased carrying angle it's wrong what is that it is increased carrying angle correct increased carrying angle that's what we call it as cubitus valgus right which is uh, a wrong option given here okay then normal height no of course they will be appearing short so that will not be the answer web neck is one of the important important clinical features of turner syndrome and the answer for this question last normal karyotype is also short because they will have abnormal karyotype of monosomy x or 45 xo okay right so that was the second question related to turner syndrome okay right moving on to the next question in a breastfed baby with a vegan mother which micronutrient supplementation should be done? Some of the students were saying like this, it's a something like age of the baby who is breastfed, but mother is pure vegetarian or vegan like that. Which micronutrient deficiency should be suspected? Very, very obvious one. It is vitamin B12 deficiency. The clue was vegan mothers, which predisposes to B12 deficiency. Okay, so very simple. Okay, then question number 14. A child with a diarrhea was eager to drink and uh, skin pinch goes back slowly as per imnca classification what should be the color coding of this condition okay you know that generally imnca related questions are asked in the section of pneumonia but this time it was related to diarrhea but i keep telling this in the classes surely you will get questions from pneumonia and diarrhea section in uh, pediatrics because it's one of the important important health problems which can even lead to death in children under the age of five years so that uh, that's why questions are repeatedly asked from pneumonia and diarrhea in children so this time it was related to IMNCA classification and related to diarrhea okay so before we go to the color coding we should know what is this condition first of all okay right uh, that will be decided based on the features very very simple eager to drink and skin pinch goes back slowly what is this condition very simple this is a case of some dehydration very very important some dehydration what are the reasons eager to drink or thirstiness is an important feature of some dehydration as well as skin pinch going back slowly which will very clearly tell you that it is some dehydration and what is the color coding for some dehydration yes of course it is yellow color or option c remember green is for no dehydration pink is for severe dehydration very important severe dehydration And there is no black color coding for uh, IMNC and all. IMNC is only three important colors. We keep this repeatedly in the, I'll keep telling this repeatedly in the classes. What is that? Yellow, green and pink color. Okay. This is some dehydration for which yellow color should be done. So this is the uh, snapshot from that IMNC classification where you can see very clearly drinks eagerly, uh, skin pinch goes back slowly and uh, irritability or features of some dehydration. Okay. Skin pinch goes back very slowly is a feature of severe dehydration and the child is lethargic or unconscious also is a feature of severe dehydration what is the meaning of skin pinch very slowly it is more than two seconds is what we call it as very slow and that will be severe dehydration pink color if none of this is present then it is no dehydration which is green color very straightforward okay now coming to the last question this was the surprise question which is usually not covered in the classes at an fmg exam level so you can expect one question like this out of the full set of pediatric questions so this was also like this you can add it to the notes and uh, you those who are preparing for the next exam should make a note of this particular topic okay that's why i'm sharing this question also a neonate presented with features of intestinal obstruction some of the students were saying that it was a clinical description like vomiting um, like bubble obstruction features like vomiting abdominal distension air fluid level seen in the x-ray like that but it was something related to intestinal obstruction and the next important important clue was cystic fibrosis history is present in the sibling meaning that this particular child could also have the same cystic fibrosis condition now the question is very simple in a child with cystic fibrosis and features of intestinal obstruction at a young age see neonate what condition should be suspected first because only when you know that condition you can answer this question this question was related to the management of this particular child so you should know the condition what is that it is a condition called meconium ileus. You all know that in cystic fibrosis, the secretions become thick as a part of which meconium becomes thick and gets stuck inside the intestine itself, causing intestinal obstruction. Typically, these children also present with delayed passage of meconium also, okay, right? Meconium ileus. So now the question is, how will you relieve meconium ileus or how will you relieve the intestinal obstruction in this particular child? Okay, so this answer I will tell you straightforward. The initial management is going to be administration of hyperosmolar 
enema which is nothing but the gastrographin enema okay right that is the answer for this particular question see this uh, snapshot from nelson textbook of pediatrics where it is clearly written for managing meconium ileus what is that gastrographin enema remember gastrographin is a hyperosmolar enema which was the option given in the question so that's why i'm picking that option gastrographin enema with the reflex of the contrast material into the ileum not only confirms the diagnosis but may also result in the passage of meconium and clear the obstruction so it's a very straightforward question where the initial management should be administration of gastrographin or hyperosmolar enema simple children in whom this procedure fails requires operative intervention so only after this failed intervention of gastrographin enema you can go for operative intervention for relieving the obstruction but initial management is what is asked in the question so answer has to be hyperosmolar enema only okay right so that is about the questions which were asked in this fmg exam january 2024 i hope this discussion was useful and i wish you all the best for your upcoming exams one more thing if you have any more question to share please um, share it in the comment section below i will try to uh, put up that for discussion at a later time okay thank you and all the best for your results